promised in session two, we will now explore in more detail kingdoms and subkingdoms, and we start with the animal kingdom. When we think of animal remedies, the first that come to mind are often lachesis and tarantula. Lately, however, these uh, kingdoms have been complemented with more remedies that we have not known before. And we have discovered the characteristics of snakes and spiders. However, sometimes we find it hard to differentiate between snake remedies and spider remedies because they have a lot of characteristics in common. In this session, Anna will clarify the typical features of each family and tell us how to differentiate between them. Enjoy this session! Hi, my name is Anne Verwerke and this is session 4 in a series of 10 in the advanced course The Vital Approach. As I discussed with Crystal Lombards in session 1 on the levels, the disturbance, as I see it in my system, is on level 5 and I call it a vital disturbance. That's why my approach is called The Vital Approach. Now, this vital disturbance is an experience. It is not a thought or an idea, it is an experience. And I gave the example that the same anecdote, the same story told about the patient can be experienced in different ways. And the uh, example was, for instance, there's somebody on the, in the office and you have a problem or a quarrel with, that it can be experienced, for instance, by a mineral remedy. Um, as uh, a lack of support, as a lack of understanding, or an insecurity, or something missing. If it would be a plant um, a remedy that is needed for the patient, it could be uh, experienced as some injury or something uh, that is uh, hurting the patient. If it's an animal uh, remedy, the experience could be of a fight and an attack. So we are going to talk a little bit more today about animal kingdom. In the session on anamnesis, the third session, we talked about tips and tricks for the anamnesis and one of the main things I said is we should always follow the patient because the patient takes you where the treasure is hidden. The treasure, with the treasure I mean, it's an image of course, I mean the remedy, the simulum needed for the patient. He doesn't know what it is, but somehow he knows where it is. And so, in his um, way of uh, explaining the complaints, in his way how he manages the complaints, he deals with the complaints, there will be hints towards his kingdom. As you can see on the schemes that I made here, there are keywords for every kingdom. The animal words are domineering, aggression, violence, territory, attack, defense, kill, inferiority, superiority, those kind of words. So, if you have a patient using those words in the beginning of the consultation, it is very, very tempting to uh, ask them to tell more about this. Because, you know, you're happy, you recognize it, and you think well, we are in animal kingdom, we already have to, we already can limit uh, our choice to a group of remedies, and now we are heading towards the right remedy. But I would advise to do this too soon, because a lot of patients will use those words in the beginning. They will tell you stories, which is normal. First, they will tell you mostly in this sequence the main complaint. Then, mostly there is a moment that they broaden the subject from me from my complaint to me, and then they will tell you stories about uh, their life, and mostly this will be about relationship and work, because these are the arenas where we test ourselves or where we have problems and our vital disturbance is triggered. So, a patient will tell you a story about his work, about his relationship, let's say the story is about the relationship. Eh? And and there are problems, and maybe there's a divorce, and, and, and you will get all details of all the difficulties. And I think it would be a mistake 
um, as a homeopath to choose too soon uh, which direction we are going to follow. That we choose, we pick a word and we somehow direct the patient into this particular word. For instance, um, the patient would say, I have a problem with my partner, he, is, uh, he used very um, rude words and I feel criticized and it's always an attack. It's an attack to uh, my person. And you would hear attack and think, aha, animal. So you can't wait, you're so tempted and you say, can you tell me more about attack? Huh? Or the patient would say, you know, my relationship, it started so good and it was so romantic in the beginning, but soon we started to fight. And you think, aha, fight. Animal Kingdom, tell me more about fight. And of course, every patient is capable to answer a question. Maybe you interrupt their line of thinking or their story, but you are the authority, you are the homeopath, so the patient assumes that you know better and you know what you're doing and, and you ask this question, so the patient thinks it's important and most patients are willing to answer your question. This this doesn't mean it has something to do with a vital disturbance. Anybody who can answer a question is um, only a good patient. Hmm? And what we do by making them answer our questions is somehow encourage them to use their imagination. Since it doesn't come from the vital, since it didn't come uh, spontaneously, we're not sure if it's imagination only or whether it's vital. So if we encourage the images, we will get images. And we can go on for a long time and encourage them and tell me more about this and, and the, what do you mean by fight and fight you mean there's one against the other, tell me more about this. And they will give their definition about fight, but not necessarily their um, experience. I mean, even a mineral remedy can have a fight. Even a plant remedy can have a fight, and they can answer your question. Even a plant remedy knows the definition of attack, and they can explain you in all details what they mean by attack. But it doesn't mean necessarily it's their experience in their life. So we should be careful to let the patient talk and not interrupt them, follow the patient and listen for the spontaneous repetition of these experiences. And the first thing we have to do is to discern whether it's a story, it's on level 3 in other words, and it's appropriate to the story, it's realistic or it's an experience, which is a whole different thing. So this spontaneous report will make us receive the case in, instead of making the case, because this is one of the mistakes we often make. We try to understand, make an interpretation of what the patients say and then make up a very nice case. Unfortunately, it doesn't have to do anything with the patient and the remedy won't be suitable. So the better thing is, as I told and repeat and repeat again, we follow the patient, we listen and we, this is what I mean by following, and we only ask questions about the subjects, the the patient already told us, so we encourage them to tell more without picking a particular word. Even if they tell a story about the fight, we won't pick the word fight and say tell me more about fight, but just tell me more about this difficulty. Very, very general. Um, another thing, of course, we have to do is question the chief complaint in all details. Because in an animal case, whatever the problem is, Probably we will hear a particular concern, a bit more than average concern, about the effect of, on their uh, attractivity, on their looks, on the impression they make on somebody else. So the complaint can be a blocked nose, you know, the typical blocked nose, it can be some rash, some skin problem, or some hair problem. Or, but even if it's, let's say, uh, a serious problem, very often the concern is what does it do to my looks? And this is a pointer to the animal kingdom because if the patient feels 
the problem makes him less, eh, then you know it's the vital experience. And less means less beautiful, less attractive, uh, less, um, I could say, capable, although capable is a word of the mineral kingdom, but less capable in the, uh, let's say, in the competition for survival. Mm -hmm. Because another one doesn't have this flaw or doesn't have this problem, then they compare themselves and in this comparison they are lesser. And this is a key word for animal kingdom, comparison. That is even more important than who is the problem, what is the problem. That is what is on the lists or on the schemes with the keywords. It says in animal cases it is not what is the problem but who is the problem. And that is the overall idea you have at the end of the consultation with an animal case that is always, in every case, somebody else the problem. It's always somebody else who is the cause of whatever uh, disturbance the patient is talking about. <clears throat> but of course, I told you, if, in, if it's a, a story of a fight or a, a quarrel, there's always a quarrel or a fight with somebody else. Yet, in a plant case, it can be experienced as, for instance, we have a quarrel, we have a fight, somebody is criticizing us or using rude words, and I feel hurt, I'm too sensitive. So, in a plant case, the problem will be felt within the patient himself. Same in a mineral case, he will feel that I lack uh, the, the, how do you say, the grit, or I lack, lack the... Uh, capacity to act appropriately in this particular quarrel. So I lack something, I miss something, I don't have something. My capacity is deficient. And in an, um, a an animal case, the problem will be the other. There's a quite a quarrel, there's a fight, and the other is a problem. If the other wasn't there, there wasn't a problem. And the wish will, would be to um, eliminate the other, to get rid of the other. When there's no other, there's no problem. So it's not within the patient himself, it is in the other. But it's not always that um, obvious uh, and it will be sometimes presented in a more subtle way and then you will hear this comparison. The patient will compare himself with his chief complaint or otherwise to the others. And of course we always compare. Eh? Comparison is natural and normal, otherwise we don't know who we are. So brothers and sisters compare um, uh, to each other because they share the same parents. So they are, if you want, competitors for the attention of the parents or, or whatever, the presence or the praise of the parents, the love of the parents in general. Children in school um, compare because they are taught to compare. They are encouraged to compare who is the best, who is number one, who has the most points, who is the best in this or this particular matter. So that is the normal thing in school. Adults compare because they compete. They compete to perform well, they compete in their job and of course they compete to have the, the best salary and, and to be the most successful. This is all our daily life, our daily stuff. Eh? But if a patient needing an animal remedy tells about comparison or competing, there is always one up and one down. So it is always a winner and a loser. Eh? There's a number one, that's the winner, and the winner takes it all, and all the others are losers. All the others don't get anything. There's always a superior, inferior quality to it. It's not that I'm, you are good but I am better, no, no. It's you or me. It's the one or the other. There's, there are no two winners. In Animal Kingdom there is no win-win situation. If you win, I lose. If I win, you lose. That is how it is experienced. So you can, ex you can expect eh, that relationships will be complicated because they are never equal. They never have an equal relationship with anybody. There's always, or you win or I lose, eh? or, or the other way around. So that's the comparison. And the complaint and other things that they tell, other uh, anecdotes, have this quality of, make. does it make me less or does it make me more? 
that may be inferior or superior in the general fight for supremacy. That's the basic idea. Now, what I often hear that somebody talks about, you know, I'm quite competitive, I'm, I'm like to, I like to do sports and I like to win. Eh? I like to be the best. Now, this is natural in sports. It doesn't mean you need an animal remedy. That's, that's the reason why you play the game in the first place, because you want to win. Eh? That doesn't make you animal. That's just the, the fun or the pleasure uh, to win or to be the best, to show yourself, to show your skills in some particular area. Same in work. It's not because you want to perform very well and you want to be the best manager or the best whatever you are in your job that you need an animal remedy. Because performing can and the need to perform can be um, due to, let's say, um, a metal uh, quality in a patient, you know, not all the minerals, not all the animal elements are um, high performers, but the metals in general and uh, the precious metals in particular are high, high achievers. So that is um, part of their nature. They want to perform very well, they want to do their job very well, they want to do their utter best for their job and they want to shine, they want to, to have praise for this, but this is you know, row five metal quality. They want to be on stage and they want to be admired. This doesn't make them animal because it's not at the expense of somebody else. It's not that they want, you know, to, to kill all their competitors and be the only ones, but they only want to shine and be, you know, good and, 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 and have applause. It also can be um, a matter of miasm because, uh, or cancer miasm, for instance, who is uh, always controlling everything, need, because they want to have everything under control, need to be perfect. If you want to be perfect, you have to be a high performer. But that doesn't make them uh, animal, because it's not in competition with somebody else. It's their own, own um, conditions to be okay. It's their personal need to be like that. Whether you are there or you are not there, it doesn't have anything to do with somebody else. It's internal, eh? it's not in a, in a fight with somebody else. And, you know, our daily life is a, a rat race after all. Eh? And we will hear those animal expressions very often because they are common expressions. So we will hear people say, you know, I work like a dog or depending uh, uh, on the country you live in, on, on the language you speak, it can be uh, work like a horse or be hungry like a lion or hungry uh, like a bear or stupid as a cow, or stupid as a goat, uh, free as a bird. You can feel like a fish in the water. Uh, you can be a bird for a cat, and, and that means you're lost. And all these expressions are common expressions, daily expressions, and they don't directly point to animal kingdom. But, of course, if you have a patient that who uses in the beginning of the consultation words like attack and defend, and domineering, and they have a lot of comparison in their um, uh, talk, and they have a lot of need of competition and be the best, and then they use all those animal expressions. Well, you know, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it might as well be a duck. Let's say that the first part of the interview, you had a lot of spontaneous words that make you think about animal kingdom. So we go now into these words a bit more in detail. For instance, you heard the word attack at least one time and you want to, to know a little bit more about it. So you can ask a patient, tell me a little bit more about attack. In general, it is a common word, attack. It can mean criticize or feeling criticized and maybe an authority figure in, on your work or in your work and you feel criticized and you feel as an attack or he, he, he blames you for something that you didn't do and, and you feel attacked or it can be a common expression like this is an attack on my integrity but that, that is not typical for animal. In animal kingdom when they mean attack in fact it is an attack to kill. The, the aim is to kill to extinguish the person, to finish him off, to, to slaughter him, 
to anyway to make them go make them go away. It is with all kinds of synonyms, but that is the basic idea. Eat him, strangle him, poison him, tear them to pieces, but make make get rid of him. That's the idea of an attack in animal kingdom. Or it can be the other way around, of course, the one who is attacked, and of course will be fearful then, and will try to escape, he will feel um, run after, uh, persecuted, uh, chased, and he will try to escape somehow, or he will try to uh, mislead the one who attacks him, and, and or even better, he will use words like ambush, or, or prey, or um, a trap, things like that. Then, then you're sure, you're quite sure you're in animal kingdom because they become more and more specific and less and less appropriate uh, uh, and, and uh, fitting, suitable for the story he's telling you because it's very unlikely that on any job, on your work, uh, somebody will actually um, make a trap uh, or, or try to kill you. So if this is experienced this way, then it's an uh, animal or a reason to uh, think about animal kingdom. Another word is violence. A person might use the word, this is very violent or it's a violent person. Mostly they were projected uh, into the outside world. And again, it is a common human expression, but in animal kingdom it is the violence again to kill. Or the violence when they feel that they have to defend the young ones. So there will be something with children and if they feel that somebody is uh, attacking their children or their children are in danger, then they will uh, display this utter violence. If it's in, uh, a, uh, a clash with uh, adults, then there will be this quality of hatred and revenge. This not just violence because there's a lot of aggression in the person but there is violence because they feel very revengeful for something somebody ever said or did or something that ever happened to them and they won't want to pay you back they won't get it back on you and this will be with uh, uh, um, uh, this quality of real deep hatred aggression is another word that you might hear uh, many times in a, a case and the quality in an animal case is the aggression that makes a victim. So there is an aggressor, somebody who is aggressive and who makes a victim. It's not this possible clash of temperaments or ideas that make people discuss and even get excited about it and emotional. No, it is this aggression that really wants to make you bleed. Many animal cases, especially in adults, will be highly compensated or sublimated for reasons we understand very well. In children, often it will be clear and direct and outspoken, but in um, adult cases we can expect people not to admit that they would actually really deep in their heart would prefer to poison the, patient, the person they don't like or to strangle him or to bite his throat, etc. Sometimes they do, but very often they won't admit directly and we have to somehow elicit this information from their unconscious mind. As I told you before, the unconscious mind is least controlled in dreams and in fears. So that's the areas that we always explore. If we're not sure yet in the third part of the uh, consultation to confirm or, if necessary, to get the information we need. In dreams, it can be uh, a clear picture uh, of the animal kingdom. We will have this aggression, this fight, this persecution, and sometimes all details of how the aggressor chases, hunts the prey, and finally kills him. Or, there can be these irrational fears that maybe they tell you I have a fear of spiders or I have a fear of uh, uh, dogs and when you question them the fear actually is to be poisoned or to be killed or to be devoured in any inappropriate un, uh, say irrational, unrealistic way and then we know it comes from the vital. 
or it can come out in their preferences for particular movies. It can be a fascination, for instance, they always look at uh, National Geographic and uh, they can't get enough of this uh, um, uh, chase where, uh, let's say, uh, one of the big cats uh, uh, follows a prey and then finally gets it and kills it. And they can maybe give you all the details and you will feel this fascination. And there is a moment where you can ask, tell me more, can you tell me a little bit more? Again, open questions, but you will see the patient will start to use his hands, his body languages will, language will change, and you will see he somehow gets into it, in the flow of it. And it, that's when it comes, when we say it comes with a lot of energy. You see the patient himself is highly interested in the things he is telling. <clears throat> and it has nothing to do, nothing at all, with his daily life. In this imagination, in this experience that he somehow shares you will, with this animal, you will understand we need the remedy from the animal kingdom. Another key word is domineering. We will hear it often in the fights that our patients have with their friends and with their neighbors and with their family members and with their uh, in the relationships, as we all have. We have our quarrels, quarrels and fights with other people. That is all very common. The thing is we have, and people will often tell them that they cannot explain themselves or they are misunderstood or, or they feel helpless and, and the other one is stronger. And we have to listen in these stories with all these details to the message. As I said in the session on anamnesis, we always listen to the message in the story, whether the, page, the patient tries to convey a feeling of being, for instance, unsupported or uh, let down, or a feeling of being hurt or being broken or being obstructed, or a feeling of, and this is really animal, or feeling of being despised and being hated and being looked down upon and, and you know, this, this really deep feeling of being lower and, and very, very much unwanted. That is this animal quality. We know these uh, rubrics in our Materia Medica. Mostly they are um, in the remedy Lacanidum because this remedy is very well proven and we shouldn't limit ourselves to this remedy because it is general in animal uh, cases to feel despised, looked down upon, condemned, and, and, and all these kind of things. Um, another word that will come often is power. Eh? But is the power game, we all love power, again this is common to all humans, but the power in the animal kingdom is on the expense on, of the other. It is the power to be on top of the other. And that is this particular animal uh, quality. We all have all qualities in ourselves, so we recognize all these qualities. But in case taking, in any case, we have to listen to what is on the foreground. What is the topic or the issue that um, uh, runs through all the levels, through all the stories, is always there, because we all have everything. It's a matter of emphasis, of, of things in the foreground, things in the background, and that's how we choose. This can be a little bit confusing in the beginning, same with miasms, we have hints to different miasms, but it's the mias it is the miasm in the foreground that finally uh, will uh, be the basis of our prescription. And it's the same thing in an animal case, we might hear a word like injured or, or hurt, or because this is all common to humans, but this repetitive quality that comes in the foreground will finally um, uh, help us to make our choice.